Hello everyone. Welcome to Around the World. Konnichiwa. Today we will study Japan. Let's go. In the early days, the Japanese people were much more eager than the Chinese to learn Western ways of manufacturing things. Late in the 19th century, they began to build large factories in their main towns. Soon they were manufacturing many different types of goods, and they quickly became the leading industrial nation in Asia. Like the British, they are an island nation with little natural wealth and obliged to import raw materials and foodstuffs. They were therefore anxious to sell their manufactured goods to pay for these imports. In some ways, the Japanese are similar to the Chinese. They also have the same color skin tone, straight black hair, and dark, rather slanting eyes. The dress of the poorer people, especially those living in the country, is also rather similar. In cool weather, the men wear tunic and trousers made of cotton, leaving off the tunic in the hot weather. The kimono, however, is an entirely Japanese garment. It is a loose cloak worn over other clothing by both men and women, and is usually made of silk. In many of their customs, the Japanese are very different from Chinese. They are very clever at copying and imitating the work of others, as I have shown in their industries. They were quick in learning how to use machines, and their manufactures have often been exact copies of goods made in other countries. Tokyo, the capital, stands near the east coast of the chief island Honshu. It is an important manufacturing center and has become one of the world's largest cities. Except for street signs and shops, its main streets are buildings much like those of European or North American cities. As in other Japanese cities, most of the people now wear Western dress. Tokyo also has many lovely parks and temples which resemble those of China. The seaport which serves Tokyo is Yokohama, which is itself a city of over a million people. Japan has some coal and oil, but has to import large quantities of both fuels. Her two main coal fields are situated on the northern island of Hokkaido and the southern island of Kyushu, far from the chief manufacturing towns. The people have made good use of their water power for manufacturing electricity, however, and more than half of their railways are electrified. Japan's great iron and steel works are at Kawasaki, near Tokyo, and Kobe and Yawata, Kyushu. In recent years, much of the steel has gone to the shipyards of Kobe and Nagasaki. They are some of the world's largest oil tankers, as well as the passenger liners and cargo ships which have been built. Steel is also used for making locomotive, railway clothes and wagons, motor vehicles, machinery, and many other articles, large and small. The Japanese are perhaps best known for their manufacture of cheap cloth. Enormous numbers of Japanese women and girls work in the textile mills. Osaka is the chief center of the cotton industry, and Tokyo and Nagoya are also important. Centuries ago, the Japanese learned from the Chinese how to produce silk from silkworm cocoons. And they won most of the world trade in silk. Pure silk, however, then comes too expensive for the majority of people. When the much cheaper rayon or artificial silk was produced, the Japanese quickly learned how to manufacture it. Now they are one of the two leading rayon-producing nations in the world. The islands of Japan are very mountainous, and among the ranges are many volcanoes. In the past, some of them have been erupted, causing great damage and loss of life. The highest mountain is Fujiyama. Fujiyama means Fuji Mountain. It is sacred to the Japanese people, and many of them travel to see the mountain. Much more dangerous to the people than volcanoes are the earthquakes. On the average, there are two or three earthquakes every day in eastern Japan, though most of them are too small for the ordinary people to notice them. At various times, for many centuries, however, disastrous earthquakes have occurred. The worst of these earthquakes have caused deaths of hundreds of people and the destruction of thousands of homes. The style of the Japanese home shows how the people always have the risk of earthquakes in mind. Usually, it is built of light wood, so that if it does collapse, it is seriously not going to injure anyone inside. Instead of glass, the window frames, oil paper is used. Both wall and windows slide backwards and forwards like partitions. On warm summer days, they are pushed wide open so that the family can look out onto the garden. The inside walls of the house are also light wooden partitions which slide backwards and forwards. They can be removed altogether to make one large room. The floors are covered with mats, and there is little furniture except a low table and floor cushions on which the people sit. They sleep on thick quilts placed on the floor, covering themselves with more quilts. 
or the bedding is rolled up and then stored in a cupboard during the day. The mother, or Okasan, keeps the floor spotlessly clean. Anyone coming into the house removes their outdoor shoes and wears soft slippers. In the cold weather, the home is heated by a large porcelain bowl which contains burning charcoal. The charcoal is made from the wood of Japanese many forests. Mother probably cooks the meals over a charcoal fire in the kitchen. Nihon, or Japan, is so mountainous that there is a shortage of fertile land. In the villages, the farmers have to build their homes on any spare land that they cannot cultivate. The farms are very small indeed, often only smaller than the Chinese farms. They have to work extremely hard as to produce all they can from only two or three acres of land. The chief crop and by far the most important food is rice, which the farmers grow on the lowest land. And in the warm summer and south, many of them cultivate tea gardens and everywhere they grow vegetables. On the higher land, they have made fruit trees. If the farmer's wife raises silkworms, she has to feed them on fresh mulberry leaves. Her husband must therefore have a large number of mulberry trees on his farm. There is no space on most farms for grazing animals and the Japanese seldom eat meat. The usual meal begins with hot bean soup. Then comes the main rice dish, with each family often eats fish and perhaps vegetables or bamboo shoots. Like the Chinese, they eat the rice with the help of chopsticks. Beside the soup and rice bowls on the table, there are small cups in which tea is served. No nation in the world takes so much food from the sea as the Japanese. The poorer people gather all kinds of seafood on the shores. They even use seaweed as flavouring. Thousands of fishermen put to sea in small open boats, others in steam trawlers. They land huge catches of sardines, herring and other fish. Canary ships sail from the Japanese coast and can the fish whilst at sea. Each year the Japanese whaling fleet brings home large quantities of whale meat and whale oil from the Antarctic oceans. And that is it for today. Please leave a like, comment on the video, then subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with new videos and also to support us. See you soon. Watashi wa Aaron desu. Sayonara.